ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? You can call me Joker. The Joker is the greatest supervillain ever created. He is inspired by the old silent film from German cinema, The Man Who Laughs. It is that carnival mask of a clown that hides the horror lurking just below the surface. And to have him pitted against the good guy who is in the mask of a horrific, nightmarish bat. So it's an interesting reversal. You have the Joker, who's this completely character who represents anarchy the randomness of crime and the fact that Bruce lost his parents because of an act of random crime and he's trying to bring order to the world and order to the life. Joker represents everything that he hates. Never rub another man's rhubarb. <laughs> well, I got a copy of Sam Hamm's script before the film got made in 89 and the origin of Joker was something that I found actually much more impressive than the one that was done in the comics by comics greatest writer Alan Moore. I felt that the take in the film was actually a more credible one, where he's just this nasty guy that's always been nasty and didn't go insane. He just really had this thing happen to him that allowed him to sort of open up his nastiness to a new creative level. It makes a lot of sense going from Jack Napier the gangster to Jack the Joker. I, I thought in a way that comics had begun depicting Joker as a very fearsome figure in the previous 20 years before the movie where he was genuinely frightening and the idea that Jack Nicholson would be playing him certainly would bring that to life. You know, I mean even before I got involved with the project people were talking about Jack Nicholson doing it, you know, before I was around. So the great thing about Jack is he can fulfill everybody's expectation and still go way beyond that. He was the one that everybody thought of from the very beginning, and as I said, fortunately, he had seen Beetlejuice and had loved it, so it worked out. Wait till they get a load of me. This would be the character whose core, while totally determinant of the part, was the least limiting of any I would ever encounter. You know, this is a more literary way of approaching than I might have had as a kid when I read the comics, but, you know, you have to get specific. In a way, his specifics broadened it rather than what you normally use specifics for so you don't drift. His specifics are he's not wired up the same way. This guy has survived nuclear waste immersion here. I have given a name to my pain. A mysterious figure. And it is back here and disappear. You know, even in my own life, people have said there's nothing sacred to you in the area of humor, Jack. You'll trample on it. You know, sometimes, Jack, relax with the humor. This does not apply to the Joker. In fact, just the opposite. Things that even the wildest comics might be afraid to find funny. Burning somebody's face into oblivion. Destroying a masterpiece in a museum. A subject that, as an art person, made me a little scared. Not this character. And I love that. He was able to use a lot of the devilish, humorous qualities that he possesses as Jack Nicholson, the man, and transfer that to Jack the Joker. I had an actor friend whose name was Clegg Hoyt. He did a thing called the bird dance, which I did spontaneously in the picture where he goes, you know, when he did that X, and that was like a personal, you know, he'd homage to, to Clegg. Certain periods of time, I know I'm, I have to look at the dailies and so forth. Other periods, uh, I'm too scared. You know, what if I don't like it, you know, or what if it makes me feel like I, you know, whatever you fear when you, when you don't confront your fears. And I didn't go to dailies at first on this picture. You know, I, I don't know why I made that decision, but finally Tim, John Peters said, no, you really should see this, you know, and the way they said that to me, I went. And from then on in, I do. I knew, you know, I mean, it really, that was even further liberating. As I say, some movies just go right. 